Adam Elliott and Melanie Coombs of Harvey Crumpet fame are back with a debut feature film, Mary and Max. Guys, thanks for joining us at City Search. Tell me, you won an Oscar for Harvey Crumpet. There must be a bit of pressure for you to back up with this one. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit. But, you know, uh, you know luckily uh, winning a, um, an Oscar does mean that people return your calls more quickly. So it sort of did help. Yeah. Yeah, look, there's a, there's a lot of pressure, but you just got to block it out. Um, you know, the, uh, the Oscar, I nearly said Logie. <laughs> the Oscar, I just says like a hundred Logies all glued together and, and you know, it's, uh, we, we don't make films to win awards. We just, we just hope that audiences engage with them and, and get off their bottoms and go and see them. Now tell me, after winning an Oscar, can you work with anyone now? There are some pretty big names involved with this film. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, obviously one of the main character voices. Uh, Barry Humphreys is the narrator. Tony Collette, Eric Banner. Can you work with anyone you want now? Oh, look, you know, I think I think that's probably simplifying it. But one of the great things about animation is that it doesn't take a lot of time for the actors to contribute to the film, unlike with the animators. Yeah, well, the poor old animators are in there for a year in these little black boxes, uh, animating five seconds a day. Uh, but look, you know, the actors really, they, they provide the voices. And for me on this film, the biggest biggest thrill was working with Molly Meldrum. That was, that was <laughs> he only had one word and, and it was quality, not quantity. Can you just give us some degree of the scope of the project? Well, actually, we, we started uh, writing down all these statistics after we'd made the film and we realised, wow, we'd actually gone through something like 70 kilos of plasticine. Uh, actually, on our website, maryandmax.com, there's, uh, there's a list of all the, the things that we used. So we ate 7,800 muffins or something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, this film was what we call in-camera. So it means everything you see on the big screen, you could hold in your hand. So uh, we didn't use any digital um, skies or digital effects. So the rain is all fishing line, the fire is red cellophane, and everything from a tear to an ocean, uh, we used uh, over 50 tubes of sex lube to make all this stuff, so uh, yeah, so it's a very uh, it's made in a very traditional way, but we did use a lot of um, uh, technical tricks to make it look, look look the way it is. A big budget feature film, a normal live action feature film, would take about you know maybe thirteen weeks to shoot, and our film took thirteen months. So that just gives you some sort of idea of the scale of it. Pretty huge. So, yeah, so when people go on about how long Australia took to make, I think Basil Lemon's a whinger, really. <laughs> <laughs> the film is essentially a comedy and, and for me sitting in the audience with Robert Redford and all these very famous people, 2,000 people all staring at us, staring at the screen, they laugh right from, right from the get-go, right to the very end and that's what, that's what you want. I mean, they cried as well, which is good. So we survived opening night at Sundance and, and all the reviews have been great. So, yeah, we're very lucky. I try and get a, a balance of light and dark and, you know, get lots of visual gags. There's lots of toilet humour in the film. But at the same time, I, I want the audience to not just laugh but also cry. And, and you know, it's like I, I try and make my films. Remember those Sizzler restaurants that you go in and, and it was all you can eat? Buffet. Well, I, buffet. Well, I try and do that. I get this big plate and I try and fill it with every possible thing. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an entertaining film. Um, people might see it always a little bit bleak at times, but, you know, life is bleak and uh, I really want the audience to walk out of that cinema feeling, wow, I really laughed but I also cried. Now I know a little bit more about autism. But the film's not really about autism. It's, it's pure entertainment and that's, yeah. uh, that's the main thing. I understand it's based on a true story of you and your pen pal, Adam, um, what does your pen pal think of all this? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, I've been writing to him for over 20 years and uh, when I came up with the, the concept of the film, we, we let him know and I wrote him a letter and he didn't seem that interested, to be honest. Uh, but we've been kept him in the loop the whole way through the process and he hasn't seen the film yet and we're trying to work out whether we should wait till it's up on the big screen in New York whether, or whether he wants to see it on DVD. It's up to him. Uh, and, of course, I've never met him either. So we're very keen to meet him and... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman said that when we get to New York, he's going to take uh, take us all out for lunch. So it'll be an odd, a very uh, nerve wracking lunch. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. And uh, oh, we, we we're convinced he's going to like the film. Thanks for joining us, guys. Well, the movie is out on April nine. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. <laughs>